Hey folks, it's Lucy with Ballyhoo Creations and this is my second vlog and in this episode I want to talk about what machine should you buy because I see people posting questions all the time in Facebook groups about what machine should I buy and everyone of course thinks that their machine is the best so that's what they answer with and there is no gold standard on what like one machine to buy. Um, so I wanted to give a few talking points about what you should look for and to really consider your own needs and what you want to embroider and that will help you decide what machine to buy. So I'm going to approach this like if I'm in the market for an embroidery machine and I have bought several of them in the past, what would I spend my money on? I've done a lot of research on used machines as well as new machines, different brands, different price points. And if I were going to spend my money and I'm very frugal, where would I put it? So if I were going to start out new to embroidery, never had an embroidery machine, just want something small to see if I like the hobby, I would buy a Brother. Because Brother is probably the number one brand as far as number of machines sold. So there's a large community of people who are familiar with them. Uh, the Brother PE800 or the Brother PE770 has a huge user group all, in, all over the place. There are user groups, so you can always join those and get advice on, you know, my machine is doing this, and then people will tell you what to do. If you bought something like, uh, say, a Singer or a Faf, those, they're not, they don't sell as many. Um, there are smaller user groups, so it's a little harder to get support from a community that way. So that's why I would buy a Brother. Um, also, they're very sturdy. They're very simple to use. Um, they're workhorses. They will stitch many, many, many hours just fine. So if I were going to spend my money, I would buy a Brother. Problem is, it is 2021, January 2021, and the embroidery machine business has been going hot and heavy, and it's hard to find the starter, what we call starter machines, that have the 4x4 hoops or there's a 5x7, the, the PE800 is a 5x7, a little bit bigger, so you can do more in this hoop than you could in this one. Um, they're hard to find. Uh, let's see, Amazon did have the PE800 for $650 a year ago, and I know because I was going to buy one, I wanted to use it for my YouTube channel for tutorials, and I didn't, which is a shame because now that same machine on Amazon is going for $1,000 to $1,200 just because they're sold out um, through the Amazon supply chain and those are secondary sellers. Same thing with Walmart.com. They have it listed for around $650, but they're out of stock. So um, if I were doing it, I would have uh, like Walmart or someplace like that send me a notification. Also call your brother dealer. They may have a similar machine that they could sell you. I'm not sure what that is, but, um, but it's probably going to be more than $650. And so that's the problem. It's hard to get your hands on a starter machine right now. They are available. Even used ones, gosh, the used ones are selling for more than the new prices. So I'm not sure that I would even buy that right now. Um, if you can find one though in the five to $700 range, then that would still be a decent deal. Um, not the four by four. I wouldn't spend $700 for a machine that does this size. It's, it's not worth it. This would be three to $500 for this size. And then um, 650 to 1,000 for this size is probably where I would spend my money. If you want to spend a little bit more and move up to a bigger hoop, this would be a 6x10 hoop. And the Baby Lock Flourish has been on sale for $1,500 for several months now, and that's a published price. 6x10 um, hoop, and it has other features too. I got a little cheat sheet here, sorry. Uh, that's where I would spend my money. If I had $1,500, I would buy the Baby Lock Flourish because um, good brand, uh, solid service, history, and that's a good size hoop for doing a lot of things, for in the hoop projects, for like in embroidering clothes. If you do patches, you can do put a lot of patches in here. So that would be a good deal too. Um, you really need to consider what you want to embroider when you're buying a machine. If you're doing children's clothes, then a smaller hoop might be exactly what you need. If you want to do adult clothing and do like the whole back of a jacket, then you need to have a big hoop like this, or this would be an eight by eight hoop. Um, if you're a quilter, you might want to do an 8x8 because there are plenty of 8x8 designs that are made for quilt blocks. And then you're going to move up into a much more expensive machine when you go to this. Um, this is not a $1,500 machine. I, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I want to say probably three to 5000 to get into a machine of that size. Um, I, I'm not really sure about those, those mid-range machines right now and where they're at, but 
And then, you know, if you want cream of the crop, and I wouldn't recommend any beginner spend money like that, but there are machines that run in the 10,000 and, and up um, range. I know the Brother Dream Machine is up there, the Viking Husqvarna, they're top of the line, which um, the designer series, I can't remember which one it is now. I haven't been in a store in like a year because um, I stay home and, and shop online and do curbside pickup. So um, just watching used prices though, you can get used machines in the like three to $5,000 range that are the high end. They were the best, you know, top of the line a few years ago. If you can teach yourself on YouTube or by, there's a, not a whole lot of machine embroidery books out there. There's a few, um, but there's a lot of YouTube videos. If you're good at learning that way, then you would probably be safe buying a used machine or buying a machine online because you're sufficient at teaching yourself. If you need a little more handholding and you know that about yourself, if you know that you need to take classes, if you know that you need to call a shop and say, I'm having a problem, what should I do? then you'd want to buy from one of the shops because the support that you get is part of that package. So you pay a little bit more from a shop, but you get that support. Whereas if you buy online, you know, there's not as much handholding. And that's not to say that some of the big places like, um, I'm thinking like Ken's Sewing Center, I'm thinking all brands, I'm thinking Sewing Machines Online Plus, I think is what they're called. They sell a lot of machines too, and they're probably real good with their phone support and email support, but it's not like you can go in and take a class. Although, I don't know, it's 2021, COVID is still like contagious all over the place. So maybe people aren't taking classes. It's just things you gotta consider. Um, but for me, I've always been comfortable buying used or buying online because I like to teach myself, but that's just me. If I were going to buy a bigger machine, which I did a few weeks ago, I bought a multi-needle and I've been shopping for them for like six months. I've been tracking prices and um, learning what I wanted. I did a lot of research on that. If you wanted to go into business, I would recommend a multi-needle if you're going into business, whether you're doing logos, if you want to do hats, you need a multi-needle because the flatbed machines, it's just too much hassle to do a hat on that. It's possible, but it's not an easy thing and time is money. Um, if you're looking at a multi-needle to have a small business, for a home-based business, I would perfectly be happy with the Baby Lock Brother for that because I've been using this a few weeks now and it's an amazing machine. This one's a Baby Lock. Baby Lock and Brother are the exact same machines in these multi-needles. They're made in the same factory. They have the same menus. They come out at the same time with the same new features. They're the same machines. They just put a different name on them and they get sold from different shops and the support model's a little bit different. But um, those are great machines. They, in the $10,000 range again, um, but you don't have to change threads as often, which is wonderful. And then they have other features, which are just amazing and they're great to stitch on. But if I really wanted to do commercial more embroidery and I knew that I was going to run my machine eight hours a day, I wouldn't buy a baby locker brother. Honestly, I would go with a true commercial machine, which would be your Tajima, your Melko, your Baradin, your Happy. I have those I hear rave reviews from, from people who embroider all day, every day, sometimes factories that do like two and three shifts, those are the machines that they buy. They don't buy Baby Lock and Brother. You wouldn't walk into a factory that does embroidery and see a line of Baby Lock Brother machines. You would see like a Melco or a Tajima or um, again, Baradin. Um, I wouldn't buy a Rakoma. I looked into them um, because they have, they're all over YouTube. They have a great YouTube channel where they teach embroidery and it's good. They uh, look like really nice machines. They look just like that. I mean, the, the EM1010 looks just like that. And it's around the same price point, um, bigger frames. But I see people selling almost new ones for half the price of a new one, which is like, what's there's something wrong there. I also have heard, and there's a YouTube video I'll try to link to, that Rakoma has a great marketing department and what they do is they find YouTube influencers who have channels that do machine embroidery or other things and they give them a free machine with a contract stating that they will sell a certain number of machines within a certain amount of time in order to keep that machine. And if they don't sell that number, and apparently it's a high number, uh, they have to give the machine back. And my problem with that is not, I mean, influencers get stuff for free and you know, whatever, I'm not against that. I guess what I'm against is they're not really disclosing that in the video saying I got this machine for free. So there's an unboxing video and there's them using it and that's part of the contract that they have to do all that. Um, but they're not saying I got this machine for free and the Federal Trade Commission is pretty clear that you have to disclose that and put it in a comment is not really enough because when I watch YouTube on my TV in the living room, which I do every morning when I drink coffee, uh, I don't see comments 
on that format. So if you're not saying in the video, then I have no way of knowing that this is basically a commercial for Recoma. So I, I don't want to speak out against those channels, which there's some amazing channels out there, great channels, and they have these Recomas in their studios now. But I wouldn't, I'm sorry, I wouldn't spend my money. I don't hear good things about Recoma, and apparently they're really good at marketing and not really good on a quality machine that will last for years. I'm hearing technicians won't work on them. Same goes for Redline. There's some really bad stuff about them. They're much cheaper, but you get what you pay for with these embroidery machines. So I just have to like put my opinion out there and say there's a reason that I didn't buy Recoma, and it's, it's that. Um, Baby Lock and Brother have a really good re reputation for a home multi-needle and again if I were going to buy a commercial one and I did consider them I saw some used and, and almost got those but Tajima Melko Baradin and Happy is less so but I, apparently a lot of people are happy with their Happy um, made in Japan so there's that. Um, so yeah that's about it I would also caution not to fall for any scams I have seen Facebook ads for the Brother PE 800, which is a $650 machine, $65. I'm like, mm, that, that's a scam. You're not getting that machine for 10% of its value at a time when they're sold out all over the country. That's just not happening. So don't fool in their money or soon parted. Don't be the fool. Don't fall for that. Um, be really careful about where you spend your money because if you really like embroidery, you're going to spend a lot of time on your machine. So you want to have a machine that's very easy to use, something that works well for you, something that has a hoop size that works for what you want to make. If uh, Again, if you're doing children's clothes, a smaller hoop is fine. If you want to do patches, you might want a big frame or hoop because you can do a lot more patches in one hooping. And it takes time to hoop your fabric and stabilizer. So time is money. That all, that all matters. Um, if you're doing in the hoop projects, if you want to make bags, zipper bags, uh, dolls, which is what I specialize in, is in the hoop dolls. You, a bigger hoop is good. Like I would six by ten uh, is to me like the minimum for in the hoop projects, and then the eight by twelve or the eight by fourteen is even better. But again, you're looking at a lot. I mean, that's thousands of dollars for those machines. So start smaller, and then think about maybe in a, a year or two you would upgrade if you um, can buy a used machine for a while. And then when the prices come back down again in another, hopefully a year, and then upgrade to something and, and you don't have to pay through the nose at a time when demand is high. So that's all that I have to say about that. Um, that's where I would spend my money based on all the research that I've done and all the machines that I've used and all the groups that I'm in and what people say about their machines. I also wanted to show what I've been working on this week because it's my vlog and I'm trying to keep up with, I, this is just for me to come back later and say, oh, that's when I did that. Okay, now I got it. So there's some Valentine's text, and this is new for me, doing text. There's My Guy Gets Me. This is the first time I've done digitized text. My Gal Gets Me. Let's see. There's Happy Valentine's Day, of course, which is missing an apostrophe, so i got to fix that. And where's my Lenny Kravitz? Here he is. I love Lenny Kravitz. There's my let love rule. That's my favorite one. I want to put that like on my sweatshirt, but I haven't had time to do that yet. That's my plan. Maybe bigger, five by seven. See again, hoop size matters. And then there's Cupid. I've been started with this one and it's okay, but I didn't really love it. And so then I went and put a heart and arrow and put some hair and this is all stupid. So I, I don't know if I'm going to spend any more time on it because Valentine's is coming up soon. I I don't know. I'm just, I'm not loving Cupid. Cupid can like get booted to the curbs for all I care. So I'll still have the text coming out. It'll be in the shop in another week or so. And I've been doing a lot of tension testing. So next week I'm going to do a video. I'm trying to do these every Friday. I'll talk about tension. Um, sorry I took up so much time, but I wanted to really dive into how to spend your money if you're going to buy an embroidery machine. Hope that helps and I will see you next week.